Anna Nix goes to a youth prison because she killed her abusive stepfather. While there, she finds friendships, drugs, complicated mental struggles, and her quest for redemption. A girl named Anna Nix played the cello in her room when her frequently drunk stepfather suddenly entered. He slapped her hard and made inappropriate advances. Anna defended herself by kicking him away, causing him to crash into a nightstand, shattering a vase. The shards fatally injured him, leading to his immediate death. During the trial, Anna claimed self-defense, but her mother vehemently denied that he would ever harm her daughter. The court sentenced Anna to four years in a strict juvenile detention center. Anna and the other inmates arrived at the prison, where they prepared for their incarceration and received orange uniforms. Warden Frank greeted them, emphasizing the importance of obeying the guards' orders. Anna shared a cell with another prisoner named Jeannie. Jeannie enjoyed reading and preferred solitude, mentioning she had been there for five and a half years. One morning, Jeannie observed Anna sleeping and privately comforted herself. The next day, while walking, Cody approached Anna rudely, questioning the newcomer about life in the facility and attempting to intimidate her by describing the other prisoners as monstrous. Cody believed Anna wouldn't survive here for long. In the dining room, Cody once again approached Anna, offering protection because many people were already noticing her beauty. However, Anna simply desired to be left alone and stood up from the table. Later, Cody and his gang corner Anna in a secluded area, subjecting her to a brutal assault. They issue a menacing warning, making it clear that speaking out would lead to dire consequences. Nurse Jane, acknowledging the harsh realities of the prison environment, advises Anna to seek help from Warden Frank if she faces severe problems. Following Jane's counsel, Anna approaches the warden, appealing for assistance. Frank's response offers two options, solitary confinement as a means to avoid violence, which he doubts she can endure, or a troubling proposition, his protection in exchange for a compromising relationship. Anna firmly declines this offer and departs, returning to her cell, where she breaks down in tears. Jeannie, her cellmate, consoles her and shares her own challenging experiences. Jeannie also acknowledges Anna's beauty and tenderly kisses her. They find comfort in each other's embrace, eventually making love and drifting off to sleep side by side. In her literacy class, Anna endures the unsettling gaze of a fellow black inmate, who proceeds to intimidate and mock her during a walk. Frustrated by the constant bullying, Anna decides to approach Cody for protection. This decision disappoints Jeannie. The gang's member obstructs Anna's path and initiates an attack, but Anna fiercely fights back. Impressed by Anna's courage, Cody is now open to accepting her into the gang. The girls lead Anna to their cell, revealing a stash of contraband, including a TV, alcohol, and drugs, all obtained through compromising arrangements with Warden Frank. Cody instructs Anna to confront the black girl who had been bullying her, with the intention of filming the altercation on their phones. Anna bravely confronts her aggressor, but the guards swiftly intervene, separating them. As a result of the altercation, Nix faces a harsh penalty. She's stripped of her clothing and placed in solitary confinement for two weeks. Several days later, Frank releases Anna from her confinement and makes an unsettling proposition, offering to end her sentence in exchange for a troubling favor. Anna reluctantly agrees, feeling deeply uncomfortable. Shortly thereafter, the girls get their first tattoos and share some recreational substances. During an intimate moment, Cody confesses his genuine feelings for Anna. They share affectionate moments together, but their encounter is abruptly interrupted by the curfew signal. Anna's mother visits her in prison, but continues to deny that her stepfather mistreated her daughter. Anna vehemently protests, insisting that her stepfather was abusive all along. In a fit of anger, her mother strikes her in the face and leaves, declaring that Anna belongs in prison. The following day, a conflict arises between a group led by a woman of color and Cody's group. The guards quickly intervene, dispersing the prisoners, and Nix is taken back to Frank. The warden informs her that he has placed the troublemaker in solitary confinement for two weeks and assures Anna that no further inappropriate requests will be made. 
Frank coerces Anna into using illegal substances and subjects her to a degrading experience. Upon returning to her cell and attempting to communicate with Ginny, her cellmate refuses to engage due to being under the influence. Nix impulsively reacts by slapping her cellmate, immediately regretting her actions. Because of the bruise on Ginny's face, Anna is summoned back to the warden's office, where he takes advantage of the situation once again. Feeling fed up with her situation, Nix turns to various substances. Anna gets into an argument with Cody and asks her to leave the group. During a walk, Nix attempts to make amends with Ginny, but Ginny pushes her away. She witnesses the girls using drugs, and Anna gives her some money, after which she becomes high. Cody notices and tries to reason with Nix, but she responds rudely. Cody declares that Nix is no longer under their protection. The following day, in the shower, a group of inmates, led by a woman of color, attacks Nix. Anna, increasingly addicted to hard drugs, experiences violent hallucinations and contemplates suicide. Ginny attempts to talk sense into her neighbor, but Anna remains unresponsive. In her drugged state, Nix provokes a fight with the same woman from before, resulting in a massive brawl and landing her back in the punishment cell. After spending several days in the cell, Nix breaks a plastic food tray and uses a piece to harm herself. Miraculously, she survives the attempt. Anna regains consciousness in a psychiatric hospital, restrained and unable to move freely. Nurse Jane encourages her to regain consciousness. Nix is horrified by the presence of drug addicts and mentally unstable individuals in the psychiatric hospital and requests to see her mother. Her mother finally admits that she knew how terrible her stepfather was and apologizes to her daughter. After some time, Frank allows Nix to return to her cell. Despite the pain, she removes the tattoo given to her by Cody. She reconciles with Ginny, and their friendship is rekindled. In the cafeteria, Cody and her gang continue to harass Nix. A black girl comes over and buries her face in her lunch. Anna has no one else to protect her. The warden summons Nix to his office and presents her with a cello. He wants her to perform at the prison talent show. In the hallway, Cody catches Anna and injures her face with a razor for daring to remove their tattoo. The villains viciously attack the girl and stomp on her hand, rendering her unable to play the instrument. When Frank arrives at the prison hospital, Nix confesses that Cody was behind the brutal assault. Jane notices how the warden lecherously treats the prisoner. Later, Anna confides in the nurse about the warden, who continuously coerces her into fulfilling his desires. Meanwhile, Frank keeps a watchful eye on the women in their cells. A few days later, the inmates launch an assault on Jane, subjecting her to a beating. The nurse rushes into the warden's office and threatens to expose the truth about his mistreatment of the prisoners. As soon as she leaves the office, Frank orders her elimination. In the locker room, an inmate approaches Jane and repeatedly stabs her with a makeshift weapon. The warden deceitfully informs Anna that Cody is responsible for Jane's death. Nix performs on the cello during a talent show, captivating the inmates with her music. After her performance, Frank informs her that her parole hearing will be held next week. Following this, he takes Anna back to her cell. Inside the cell, Jeannie advises Nix not to trust the warden, emphasizing his habit of deception. Cody and his gang attempt to lure Anna into the corridor, but are deterred by a vigilant guard. Shortly after, Nix receives a letter regarding her parole hearing. She becomes suspicious that Frank might deceive her and seeks Cody's assistance, as Cody is eager to settle the score with their cruel boss. Cody provides her with a phone and asks her to discreetly record a video during her interactions with Frank. When Nix arrives at Frank's office, he requests that she play his flute, promising to speak favorably on her behalf at the hearing. Unbeknownst to Frank, Nix covertly records the entire encounter on her phone. The following day, her parole hearing commences. She expresses remorse for her past actions, but Frank reneges on his part of the agreement, characterizing Nix as a persistent troublemaker who should remain in prison. The parole board is inclined to deny her release when Anna presents them with a video depicting Frank's inappropriate behavior. The warden is promptly apprehended for his misconduct. 
In the corridor, enraged inmates launch a furious attack on Frank. The following day, the commission finally grants Nick's parole. On the outside, her joyous mother reunites with her daughter. After some time, Nix performs on the cello at a grand concert. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and stay connected with us.